there, Mark Risen Hopkins here with another edition of Crypto Pulse. Welcome to Pulse for Friday, March 22nd, 2024. Today's tech news has been absolutely dominated by the US DOJ's lawsuit against Apple. So we're going to talk about some of the stories from this week that warrant a second look. Stay tuned. <laughs> One of the first stories today on deck is news from the United Nation, who appears to now have an opinion on AI. The UN General Assembly late Thursday afternoon adopted a landmark resolution on the promotion of safe, secure, and trustworthy artificial intelligence, AI systems, that will also benefit sustainable development for all. That may sound nice, but what does that actually mean? Well, as we've talked about on the program before, safety is usually just a word for censorship and filtration of AI. Folks who don't understand the fundamentals of the underlying technology tend to let their imagination run wild with visions of Terminator and iRobot. The specific language of this resolution from the UN says that they call on member states to, quote, to refrain from or cease the use of artificial intelligence systems that are impossible to operate in compliance with international human rights law or that pose undue risks to the enjoyment of human rights, unquote. That sounds good in principle, of course. Who can disagree with something that interferes with human rights? It doesn't sound like you'd want to be on the other side of that argument. The problem here is that much like vaguely defined objectives like safety from terrorism or the safety of children, it's a wand that you can wave around to make anything you don't like, are afraid of, or feel poses a threat to your power simply just disappear. You can see shades of this start to surface already in American policy, as was pointed out by David Johnston last year at the North American Blockchain Summit during his keynote address on decentralized AI. The administration put a hard cap on the amount of gigabytes of size the AI can be. 20 gigabytes. 20 gigabytes. My laptop has more space than the permissionless AI you'll be allowed to use without registering with Homeland Security. I what David is referring to here is the artificial limitations that the Biden administration has unilaterally put on developers who experiment with artificial intelligence. Essentially, unless you're one of the anointed few like OpenAI, Google, or Meta, you will need to register your AI experiments with the government as if it were a firearm. If you're not a developer who's worked with LLM technology and you ascribe to the worldview that this is only headed towards a global apocalypse, as Hollywood likes to predict, maybe this sounds reasonable. For those of us who actually play in this world, it's hard to come up with a more absurd metaphor than what's being proposed here to illustrate the point. It's akin to forcing every scientist to register their microscopes with the government because a handful of scientists have used them in germ warfare. It's a draconian measure that blurs the line between safeguarding and stifling the pursuit of knowledge, treating every innovator like a potential threat instead of a potential contributor to progress. So where does that leave us this Friday? Let's try not to end on a dour note. There are a lot of really great decentralized AI projects out there. One that I occasionally contribute to is the one David Johnston, the gent who I played the clip from earlier, represented at the NAB Summit. It's called Morpheus AI. If you're interested in participating in a project that takes the power of generative AI out of the hands of large mega corporation and out of the purview of large state actors, it's worth a look. Head to more.org or click the link in the bio for more information about them. Morpheus is just one of many such efforts out there. Do you know of any others you like? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for sticking around today. We'll be back next week with more. Keep questioning, keep learning, and until next time, stay curious.